everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. My name is Alice Troyer, and I'm going to uh, talk to you about the two projects that I've been working on during my internship at NASA. So the first project um, is a project about deep learning and metagenomes. And the second project is uh, about creating a visualization prototype for a type of data, which is called Amplicon. So even though the two projects are independent from each other, they sort of uh, respect the chronology of how scientists work. Um, so indeed, the first project um, is about finding a way to analyze and use the data when it's, once it's been collected, like the raw data. And the second project is about finding a way to uh, show and display those, those results to show them to the world. Um, but before uh, digging into the project, I am going to present myself a little. So my name is Alice, as I said. Um, I'm doing right now a master's degree in aerospace engineering uh, in a school called Isae Supérieure, which is in France. Uh, so I've studied a lot of different uh, engineering engineering related topics, uh, but never bioinformatics, which I've been doing for the past few months. So it's been really challenging, but also really, really interesting. I've learned a lot of things. Um, so the reason I'm talking right now is because I'm part of the Blue Marble Space Institute. Uh, I've been working there since April, and this is my last day. Um, so the first project, uh, the, the complete name is creating a feasible pipeline for deep learning for data intensive metagenomes. So uh, metagenomes are uh, what you get when you collect samples from uh, the environment. For example, if you go to uh, the Pacific Ocean and you collect water or sand, you will, and you analyze it, you will get a metagenome. And so since they come from nature, those type of genomes uh, have a lot of data inside them and a lot of that data that is that we don't know really what it is. And so when you study metagenomes, you have databases that are incomplete and also uh, massive, they are really, really large. And so it's really challenging for uh, scientists to work with them uh, because it takes too much time to analyze them. If you want to work with one metagenome, it's okay. Uh, it's only going to take like a day or two. But if you want to, wor to work with the world of metagenome, if you have a project that is about mapping the world of metagenomes, it's going to be completely impossible to work with like the raw data. And so the goal of my project was to find a way to um, to uh, create a data set that is representative of the world of metagenomes that and so that is small enough that you can actually use it, but also big enough that it's representative of the world of metagenomes. And so to do that, um, I used a um, piece of software which is called Metasic, um, and I used it to find a large number of different metagenomes. Um, and when I run this algorithm, I found uh, 125,000 uh, metagenomes that uh, uh, were okay with the criteria that I set. Um, and so once I did that, I needed to actually have those metagenomes because right now I, did, I only add the IDs. So I got access to uh, UC Davis servers where they are actually stored. And so I compared the name, the IDs of those metagenomes to the ones that are so, that were stored in UC Davis servers. And I came up with 123,000 metagenomes. So that was my big data set from which I was going to choose and select the metagenomes representative of uh, the metagenome tree of life. And so to do that, um, I ran a clustering algorithm uh, on so on all those meta, on all those metagenomes, and so the result of this uh, algorithm gives a plot that, that looks like this one, where uh, each cluster, each group of metagenome, uh, is so each metagenome is grouped. They are grouped together when they are similar. So, for example, maybe the blue ones are metagenomes that that come from the water from the Pacific Ocean. And so they are similar in some way and so they were grouped together by the algorithm. And so then in, I went to, into each, each cluster and found, found uh, a few uh, metagenomes 
that were representative of the cluster and also representative of the world of metagenomes. And so I took the best ones from each cluster and uh, grouped them together to have a smaller data set. So just a few metagenomes, but that were uh, really representative of the, 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 the world of metagenomes, the diversity of metagenomes that you can find in the world. And so once um, I have, I, I don't know if my uh, small data set is representative yet, but if it is, um, we will be able to use uh, this data set to perform deep learning algorithms and uh, capture really uh, the potential of this uh, microbial dark matter, which we don't really know what it is. And so we will be able to link uh, in entire microbi microbiomes with their environmental uh, environment. And so this is a project about analyzing uh, data. And so in the future, when we will have results with this, when we will be, we will have been able to analyze this result, we will want to uh, visualize it. And that's the goal of the second project, even though it's, if it's for completely different data. So um, this is an example of GeneLab, GeneLab's website. Uh, so you can see there are several plots uh, about uh, that showed different things. And so the goal of this project for me was to do the same thing uh, with studies that are also uh, already on GeneLab's website, but a type of study where, where visualizations haven't been done yet. And so uh, I used a study which is called GLDS-170 to do that mostly. And I worked with tables like this one, which are not very forthcoming. Um, so for example, this, uh, this table is um, the, it shows the taxonomic ranks of uh, different uh, samples. So since this is bacteria, it's, you probably don't really understand what it is, but if I show you the same uh, sort of table for uh, humans and blue whales. It's, there are some names that ring bells. For example, you can see that humans and um, blue whales are classified the same way up, up to the class level here, which because we are both uh, mammals, but then we get separated because we are part of the primate order and they are part of the Cetacea. And then you can see that Homo sapiens, it's the name, so it means humans and uh, Baleano they are musculus means blue whale is the name of the species. So that's the, the other table is exactly the same thing, but for bacteria. And so I use those kind of tables. This is not the only one, but it's an, a, an example to uh, build several plots. So this plot is an example. Uh, it shows um, how similar and how different the different samples are from each other. For example, you can see the one on the left, the number S6 is very different from the others because it got separated really uh, early in the classification. But for example, the uh, uh, first one and the 20th one are uh, pretty similar because they were uh, separated only at the end of the clustering algorithm. So this is just one plot and I've several other plots and I'm going to show you what it looks like on uh, the app that I've created, uh, which is more similar to what is going to be on uh, GeneLab's website in the future. So there are several plots and you can do several things with them. This one is a bit complicated, but since I talked to you about the uh, taxonomic ranks, I can show you this plot. So for example, this plot, so you can see it's, it's like a summary for um, um, the whole study. So all the samples are mixed together inside them, inside it. And you can see uh, up to which rank uh, the samples have been classified. And so here you can see that most of the samples were classified up to the genus level, which is a pretty uh, precise one. And so it means that this study was a, a good one. Um, so there are several plots and you can do several things with them. You can select the data that you want to see, the ones that you don't want to see, you can zoom in, zoom out. And so it will uh, 
hopefully be very useful for uh, scientists. Um, and so this is this concludes my two projects. Um, so I would like to uh, thank my mentors for all the help they have been provided, providing to me, uh, and also Blue Marble Space for uh, creating this uh, Young Scientist program, uh, which allowed me to do this internship. So thank you. And if you have any questions, I can take them. Fantastic job, Alice. I'll see if anyone has any questions. They can raise your hand to ask questions. Um, you can also type them in the chat. Um, it is very cool to see making that transition. Um, well, maybe not transition, but by being an engineer who's now incorporating bioinformatics and in, in some new realm of scientific knowledge. Um, how do you feel about that? Has, has it been extremely difficult? Do you feel like it's, it's broadened your thoughts on engineering? Um, how has that impacted your thinking for your future career, for instance? So it, the discovering biology and space biology and bioinformatics was really challenging at first because I stopped doing biology in high school. So it was really new, uh, all the uh, language uh, was difficult at the beginning. But um, I think as an engineer, uh, I'm, I feel very lucky to have been able to do that um, because so in my future life, I hope to be part of teams that are going to, for example, build rovers that go to Mars. And those rovers are going to collect the samples that I've been working on right now. And so I feel lucky because I got to see what is done with those samples. And so like I, I see like the bigger picture now. And I think it's really valuable. And it will be really valuable for my life as an engineer. And also, I got to do some research. And engineering is not really research. So very cool. I'm really happy. Yeah, I love that. Well, the YSP has also helped you kind of broaden your, your horizons a bit, too. Um, we have a question from Sanjoy. Go ahead and unmute. Thanks, Ram. Actually, you asked the question I was going to ask. Is, uh, I am also a transplant from aerospace engineering into astrobiology, and I also made the switch uh, after my master's. Um, but my question is, so right now, it seems like it, the focus is on metagenomes, which, tell you, which tells you kind of the big picture of who's there, right? Is there plans to go deeper into like the proteomes or the metabolo metabolomes to identify exactly who's active as opposed to just who's present? Um, I so this project is part of a project that Adrian, my mentor, has been uh, doing for a lot of years. Um, so right now the goal was really to be able to build that asset that you can really use. Um, and so depending on how far we reach, because I'm going to keep working on it uh, in the next months, in the next few months, maybe it could be one one goal, yes, but it was mostly being able to grasp. Uh, and use uh, a, some metagenomes for uh, transfer learning tasks mostly. Um, 